Hidden high in the North Atlantic Ocean, halfway between Norway and Iceland, you'll find 18 windswept islands called the Faroes. This is the story of what it's like to fly here. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from Greenergrass.com. Right now, Suzanne and I are in Oslo, Norway. We're about to head off to the Faroe Islands. We're traveling with Atlantic Airways, which is a new airline to me. Can't wait to check it out. But the first step is to grab a train to the airport. Let's head in and get on board. Oslo's central station offers quick access to the airport every 20 minutes. We had our tickets in no time. For 210 krona per person, we were on our way. The Faroes, Jeb, like why are we going there? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the answer is why not? So it's a fascinating place, uh, kind of a remote island archipelago, something that's been on my list for forever. So I, uh, I'm not only excited that we get to go, uh, I'm more excited that you're coming with me. Oh, and you guys are coming with us too. That's it. So <laughs> join us uh, for this flight and then we'll share some experiences on the ground as well. I think we can't not do that. The door closed and we were on our way, reaching speeds of up to 120 miles per hour as we made our way out to the airport in about 15 minutes. The kiosks are not working to check in for Atlantic Airways and there's no, uh, there's no departure area here or bag drop area here either. So uh, we're thinking maybe we're a little early, uh, but uh, nobody seems to know what's going on. So hopefully we can get on this plane. The Faroe Islands are known for really rough weather, including extremely low visibility, which Suzanne explained to me means Atlantic Airways crews are trained to an unusually exacting standard. Their aircraft and their crews authorized to fly are these types of RMP procedures. So down to like pretty low visibilities within that tolerance of 1.1 miles. She is the brains of the operation. It seems like a pretty stringent type of procedure. So it's impressive that everything, everyone is trained to fly those. With even more confidence in Atlantic Airways planes and crew, even in the worst weather conditions, it was time to head back upstairs. The aircraft is in the air. It's coming to pick us up. Uh, it's leaving the Faroes. And it's about two hours before uh, uh, departure time. So we figured that's probably when check-in opens. So we're gonna go find out. When we got upstairs, we were greeted by a massive line. Turns out SAS handles the ground operations for just about every airline here, so everybody was in that line. Plus, we were there during a pilot strike, so things were just a bit of a mess all around. We eventually did get through and we're on our way. We're here in the midst of an SAS pilot strike, so there's a lot of cancellations, a lot of confusion here. We're fortunate that it looks like, at least for now, um, our flight is on time, on schedule. So keep your fingers crossed, we're getting to the Faroe Islands today. Atlantic Airways does not offer business or first class, so naturally they don't have a lounge here at Oslo. We were early for our flight, so we used the time to validate a rumor we'd heard that Norway was famous for hot dogs. I can now confirm, but you gotta get the crispy onions. Atlantic Airways has a fleet of three Airbus A320s, like this one, the one that we'll be on for our first visit to the Faroes. Airlines play an important role as ambassadors for a place. I remember the first time I spotted one of these A320s, I was in Copenhagen ahead of SAS's inaugural A350 flight. I knew then that I wanted to visit. It was Finn Air that inspired me to visit Finland, and Iceland Air to visit Iceland. The role of airlines just simply can't be overstated. What nation's flag carrier would you most like to try? Let me know in the comments below. In addition to Atlantic Airways, both Widero and SAS serve the Faroe Islands. Information for passengers of Atlantic Airways flight 435 to Faroe Islands. We now ask all remaining passengers to board the aircraft through gate D5. First time uh, for me being the last one on the plane. I don't mind it. Yeah, it's uh, a little more relaxing. Our seats in the second row, like most European carriers, were fairly basic. We struck economy gold by not having a seatmate in the middle. There was sufficient legroom, USB power, room for a carry-on. Up top, you'll find reading lights and air vents. In the seat pocket, you'll find a menu with food you can buy. Atlantic Airways also offers an in-flight magazine. You don't see many of these anymore. My favorite feature, it's gotta be the route map. Despite its small fleet, the airline offers flights all over Europe, from seasonal routes to the Canary Islands, all the way up to Iceland, a great way for visitors from the U.S. to reach the Faroes. We have just about a disclosure doors, study, and set the course of the mountains. 
And later on, approach the Faroe Islands. We will give you a short update on latest taxi weather for Vanguard Airport. Flight time is estimated around 1 hour and 35 minutes. So we hope you're comfortable, seated, and enjoyed this terminal switch on the UPS flight. We taxied out to the runway in order to leave mainland Europe behind. Every flight is naturally exciting, but one to a new place, especially one as remote as the Pharaohs, well, that's next level. So when we left the ground behind, my excitement went through the roof. Shortly after takeoff, flight attendants first passed around food to passengers who had pre-ordered it. Then they offered drinks to everyone else. The tray table is sufficiently large, uh, large enough for me to get some work done. Streaming entertainment was available. It was smooth, fast, and had a fair number of choices. The moving map was great to keep track of our progress. We lucked out because we didn't have a seatmate. In addition to these A320s, Atlantic Airways also operates scheduled helicopter flights in the Faroe Islands. It makes sense if you think about the nature of the landscape. Helicopters can be the fastest way for residents to move between islands. In addition to so many other adventures, we had the chance to experience this service during our stay in the Faroe Islands. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video we'll post highlighting that flight and so much more from the ground here. It was truly one of the most magical places we've ever visited. But shortly, we began our approach, and I spotted the first island. There are 18 here, 17 of which are inhabited. And remember what I said about the Faroes having rough weather and poor visibility? Uh, not today. We enjoyed an absolutely stunning approach. Just a taste of what we'll share with you from the ground in our next video. And now it's time for the unscientific Jeb score, where we rate flights using five factors, even when they don't exactly apply. But this flight isn't all about the score. Keep watching to see why. First, the lounge. Well, there wasn't one. Frequent flyers leaving from Copenhagen will have access to a lounge there, but that wasn't us. Zero stars here. The seat was great for economy. Power at each seat is essential these days, and they were comfortable. Five stars. The food looked reasonable. Your best bet, though, was to order ahead of time, which we didn't do. Also, Atlantic Airways used to offer alcohol to passengers at no additional charge, but these days, it's just coffee, tea, or water. Three stars here. The in-flight entertainment was great. The streaming service was smooth and fast. There was also a holder for your device in the seat, which meant you could watch a movie and use the tray table. That's a win worth five stars. The service was really good. The flight attendants may have been austere, but they were efficient and available. Five stars for them. So that leaves Atlantic Airways from Oslo to the Faroe Islands with 18 out of 25 possible stars. But this flight was not really about the score. You see, I love aviation because after a smooth and comfortable flight, hurtling through the air at previously unimaginable speeds, we touched down in a completely different place. In fact, if you think about it, we walked onto this airplane and then 90 minutes passed. And now, here we are, walking back out of the same door into an entirely different world. There's nothing more magical than that. Join us as we check out this incredible place called the Faroe Islands, with more sheep than people, constantly changing weather, waterfalls, buildings with grass roofs, and so much more. We can't wait to share our experiences with you. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.